Hello, hello, and welcome to this stream. We are a DOTV podcast, or Defenders of the Veil, and on Mondays, typically. Tonight, we are not going to be doing Dungeon of the Mad Mage like we typically do on Sundays. Uh, David has other things going on and will not be able to join us. So instead, tonight with me, I have Steve. Good evening. And Lewis. Hola. Excellent. So, as I said, we are going to be doing something D&D like. Uh, we are going to be checking out the Solo Adventurers Toolbox. Um, obviously, it's going to work out a little bit differently than the book intended since there are three people here and not exactly a solo thing. But this way, we're all really new to it and we can kind of sort of play off of each other to kind of see where we're going, see if we got it figured out. Anybody have anything they want to add? I have gone through the books, but haven't really done much with it. I did one try, and uh, it seemed to work well, but I was kind of lost, so we'll be finding our way here. And uh, my only thing is my name is temporarily not my name until my name is given to me by a uh, cat. So you know, once that comes up, my name will change. Okay. Well, there's that. Let's see. We've got... There we go. So we are basically starting with a blank page here. Um, now, like the author of this book, uh, when he plays, I guess, at least according to what he says in here, is he'll typically uh, go with two PCs, you know, that he plays. So that way, there's still some diversity and it justifies the use of death saving throws, which, okay, I get it, that makes sense. Um, so since there's two of you with me, I'll just have you each play your characters. We'll keep uh, good old Jimothy and Bartholomew on the, on the bench. They can be bench warmers today. They'll be your backups. Uh, <laughs> tag me in, coach. Uh, anyways. So yeah, why don't we start by introducing your two characters, and then we can kind of get into some more details after that. Do you want to go first, Lewis, or shall I? You go ahead. Go ahead. All right. My character is a gnome fighter. We're fourth level at this point, and he's a champion. And uh, he comes from a merchant artisan's family and has uh, tinker's tools. And his family was in the locksmithing trade. But he, um, he fights with a, a scimitar, sometimes a whip, sometimes a crossbow. But other than that, he's a pretty straight up fighter. and his name oh sorry he's got a really super long name uh, Igden Warren body knock Virgil Pettigan so on gnomes have a lot of names but he goes by body knock body knock two D's no K excellent I'm just gonna write that down yeah, something else that's going to be handy is having a notebook for doing this. Uh, if you decide to try out the Solo Adventures Toolbox yourself, the author also recommends having like a, like a flip map, probably uh, some like dry or wet erase markers, dice obviously, miniatures, or unless you're playing on like, you could play it on a virtual tabletop like how we are today, so that works as well. 
Alrighty. And I will be playing Cat in the Chat name here. So whenever uh, Mistress Cat gives me my name, it'll be there. But I am a Gem Dragon Emerald Green Gem Dragon uh, Shadow Mage Sorcerer, level 4. Who was a fence uh, for a uh, uh, blah 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 thieves guild? He was fencing all the stuff for him and everything before he, uh, whenever he was young, just to get some extra money. And then his magic showed up. He hasn't had the magic his whole life, like some. Sorcerers. And, uh, let's see here. He likes, uh, uh, he has a crossbow, but he probably won't use it as much because he'll be using, you know, fire bolts and stuff like that. But if there's any execution he needs to, he has a own crossbow that he'll use. Okay, well, we, we gotta come up with some kind of a name for you, at least in the interim. Yeah, cat and chat name here. You can call me Chatty. Okay, we'll go with that. So, until further notice... Lewis's character is known as Chetty. Body Knock and Chetty on an adventure together. What do you know? Alright, so I'm actually going to use... Uh, well, I'm, I'm working off of the example of play that they include in the book to kind of, you know, uh, establish some... Uh, establish a few things. So... For setting, since we, I at least, have already, have been kind of playing around in the Seas of Vidori setting, and we recently went into a larger city in that game, uh, I, I'm kind of, I've got enough familiarity with the city of, of Sandport that I think that's going to be where we start. Now, even though this... We're playing in the pirate game world. This isn't the pirate adventure. Um, and we'll just kind of see where things go from there. So the first thing I think we're going to want to do is kind of... Let's let's figure out how long you guys have known each other. So the author begins with, uh, we do one of the yes or no questions. So on a yes or no roll, you just roll a d20. And... Once you get to okay, well, I, I I need to ask the question first. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so I think the question, well, the question is going to be: Have have Chatty and Body Knock known each other a long time? And since there's no reason for that to be any more likely than less likely. It's just going to be a straight roll. We can go with your 16 there, and that would be the result of a yes. So you guys have known each other for a, for a long time. Maybe uh, maybe you grew up together. Actually, that could be that. That's another yes or no question. Did you guys grow up together? Why, don't, Steve? Why don't you do a roll on this one? And this one, it's more. It's kind of it. Eh, I'd say it's still yes or no. It could go either way. But yes. I'd say a 15 is a yes. So you guys, like, basically grew up together. What? Oh, and you're a uh, dragonborn and a gnome. So that's an interesting pairing. So you guys were probably friends for... Well, you guys have been friends for life, it seems. Alright. So you pretty much, you know, you guys are familiar with each other. Um, and we are in the city of Sandport. So, uh, Steve, for for you to get some context here, the city of Sandport is a coastal 
uh, city, uh, I would hope, being a port. And uh, the, the city is most well known for its glass artisans. So um, the city, like everywhere in the city where there would be typical windows, everything is stained glass. Uh, there, there's a glass uh, blowing district, you know, and um, it also sits on like the beach. It's all like uh, like white sand beaches. It's real pristine. It's real nice. There's a upscale restaurant called the Fish Bowl. Uh, but yeah, so you got you you're in like a port city right now and how about we uh, actually that's fine just like that we'll go with this the tavern sounds as they are so yeah I suppose that means we are sitting in a tavern <laughs> that's based by that so let's take a look at some of these tables Okay, so you are sitting in a tavern called the Sword and Assassin. Um, it's poor quality, but the uh, male dwarf innkeeper is pleasant. He's cordial, and. It says here that there is also a rumor floating about in this tavern. Could this rumor perhaps lead to an adventure? Guess there's only one way to find out. Hmm. It's a strange rumor. There is a creature in the capital of the realm. At least that's what's floating around the tavern. Is it a rabbit man? Why don't we do a yes or no question and find out if is it a rabbit man? I'm going to say it's probably less likely that it is a rabbit man. So let's do minus four to the roll and that's going to be a seven. So no, it's not a rabbit man. This won't be a question for the Oracle, but um, it, are we in the capital, or is this just a port city? So this is would be considered the capital of this region. Um, okay, so we're in the right place for this rumor. Yeah, so with the way the island chain is set up. Let me see. I think I might be able to bring up a map on the... Uh, at the very least bring up the map on the... Oh wait! Duh. I can bring up the map on... on the roll 20. So, here, I'm going to zoom in. Or at least for the stream. Alright, yep, right there. That is the city of Sandport on this island chain. Right here, the faraway island chain. So, a little more context. This is a... I don't want to say newer uh, place, but this has been colonized more recently, probably within the last couple hundred years. And yeah, this being the largest island of this chain and the biggest city on it, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty safe bet that Sandport can be considered the capital of the realm. 
there is a creature in the capital of the realm. What kind of creature? So, I think with that we need to get, uh, what is it called? The situations? Yes, the situation. So this is... Oh. Oops, hang on a sec. There we go. If you're using the, um, the pages, you can refresh to get a new one. Gotcha. So, this is a chart where it's, uh... Okay. So it's... 499 different verbs. But it can be... It all depends on how you interpret things. So, that's the other thing with, with this method of playing D D is it's gonna require lots of creativity and imagination and interpretation. So our first one I would call these words seeds. S E D S seeds to your imagination. So I'm just gonna roll on it four times to get four different words. And the, those words will help us kind of flesh out this rumor of a creature in the capital. So, okay, the four words are nag, prowl, shout, and Praise. Nag, prowl, shout, praise. Interesting. So now it's just a matter of how we want to interpret that. Well, nag and prowl, um, I would go with the idea that Nag, meaning some ruler's husband or wife has heard about this monster and is nagging him for us to get rid of it, maybe. I don't know. Prowl was it was prowling around outside their court. What was the third word? Shout. And the fourth word is praise. Praise. Any thoughts, Lewis? Only thing that's coming to my mind right off the top of the well, the thing is, uh, you know, you, we heard the rumors by a, bun a bunch of shouting. Okay. And yeah. <clears throat> and I guess the praise part where we would get praise if we found it. That's what I was quite ready to say. Yeah. Okay, so I think with that, like, it's not so much a rumor that we heard. It's, uh, we hear some shouting coming from the street outside, and there is a creature prowling. And, like, you know, we can kind of figure out how the other two things work, but I think before we do that, we need to kind of go back and maybe... <clears throat> Free alcohol if we can uh, if we can get up before it destroys this guy's uh, tavern. Yeah, so if you guys want to rush the street, I'll bring the map back with a play map. Just as an aside, the um, that map seems ideally suited for a pirate campaign. Lots and lots of islands. Oh, oh yes. 
and it takes forever to sell on that thing. You don't look like it, but on the bottom of the map, there's little lines that you know, for miles. And it's yeah, it takes days to travel from one island to the other. Big war. Okay, so let's uh, why don't we put your tokens like more in the center of the map? Yeah, in roll 20, if you go to the line drawing thing and you hold down the shift key, it will snap to the grid. Hold the shift before you click and it'll snap to the grid. That's not the freehand one. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, no, no. I was saying if you need it. All right, so there's a commotion out in the street. So we need to look at the chart to figure out... Uh, what kind of encounter this is going to be? Dead. So if I look at <clears throat> I mean, we know it's going to be a combat, so why don't we look at the combat table? Yeah, I found out I didn't have any understanding of the challenge rating system. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I forget where the... Uh... Oh, there it is. Devo, you want to give me a d6 roll, please? Okay, so on a 5, it's going to be 1 CR 1 half plus 2 CR 1 fourth monsters. So it's not just a creature, there's multiple. Let's see if we can use that handy table. Oh, I see. You know what? You had that all you had that all set already. Let's see what happens when I click it. Okay, that doesn't help. Oh, there we go, creatures. Yeah, down at the bottom, monsters by environment, urban, is what I would choose here. All the way at the bottom. Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, it's a, where'd it go? Uh, one CR one half and two CR one quarter. Ooh, so we've got a swarm of insects. And then 
That's our that's our half. And for our quarters. Um I think we're gonna roll again because that one came up with zombie. And I, I don't really <laughs> see that one. You know, zombie and swarm of insects. Well, the swarm of insects could be coming out of the zombies. Or it could be flies around his rotting flesh. Or it could be with the two giant centipedes that just got rolled up here. That works too. I was trying to drop the swarm of insects up on the thing, but it wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, yeah, it is in the compendium. As is centipedes. I think. Yep. And I found out those things have character sheets. NPC character sheets, but you can click and roll and such. Yep, so I'm bringing those up right now. And hello, Galaxy. Thanks for dropping in. Galaxy in the house. I guess that's going to be the token for the giant centipedes because it doesn't want to bring out the, the actual token. That's weird with it actually having it there. Alright, so we're going to need first off three uh, 1d8s to determine where each of these creatures is, like how far away from you they are. four and five. Okay, that would be about where they are. 
So I guess the first thing we're going to have to do, let me get that initiative tracker out there. Yeah, I think my name's too long. Let me shorten it. Oh, Earl 20 is failing. I don't know why. No attribute was found. Alright, it there was key roll again. So why is this still showing the old name? I'm saying Chatty. Okay, on mine it says Cat and Chat name here. Yeah, that's what I see on the from the DM view. But that's not what you're seeing on the stream. Oh, huh, it worked this time. Cool. Oh boy. Yeah, that name is a little excessive. Let me go in and see if I can change it everywhere. You see, and if you were me, for body knock would have been B O D D Y G N O C K. Yep, yep, I didn't think of that. Actually, it was a randomly generated name. <laughs> Okay, so the giant centipede character sheet token thing isn't even filled out, so I won't be even be able to use that for those guys. It's funny because it's there. If you like click the little arrow, it shows, you know, armor class natural thirteen hit point four. There's all the stuff there that just won't allow you to click on it. Yeah, there are the occasional ones that they don't have fully fleshed out. And, and it wouldn't even give you the token, that's just bizarre. And of course the swarm of insects won't give me the, uh, the clickable character sheet. Monster Manual. Oh, here's some Monster Manual.
Okay, now that that's finally ready. Yay! It looks like... Uh, body knock will be going first. All right, well, I think we know they're hostile. There are insects after all, so he's going to run up and attack with his scimitar. <clears throat> well, I don't suppose 10 hits, does it? <laughs> um, the giant centipede, a 10 does not hit. No, sorry. All right, and... I don't have a bonus action, so I will end my turn. Alright, the swarm is up next. You probably need to add another centipede, unless they're both going to act on the same initiative. Yeah, I'm just going to have them act on the same. Very good. No need to worry about it. Yeah, probably not after... In, in, a, in a sec here, but alright, the swarm is gonna go, and since uh, Body Knock is the closest adversary, yeah, that's what I thought. It's gonna move up and attack. Or it's, let's see, how did swarms attack different? And yet, they basically engulf the, basically on the same square. Alright, so it only has a speed of 20, so it can actually get to you, Body Knock, and it will. I'm just going to put it next to you so that I'm not covering your token, but it is sharing a square with Body Knock. Oh, no! Go away! So the swarm is at full HP, so it's going to make a bite attack on you, uh, body knock. Ooh, ah, uh, nat 20, damn. Well, yeah, yes. Okay. Oh, hey. Real quick, quick aside. Watch uh, if you if you're watching the stream. Watch the chat. Oh, oh, we can roll now. Yes, we can now roll dice in the chat. Woo woo. All right, so net twenty. <clears throat> Uh, 44 piercing damage. So, okay, so, so... 84. We have a swarm of insects. Gnats are insects. So we have a bunch of gnats. Gnat 20. Buddy knock. There are probably more than 20 in this one. Hee <laughs> hee. Alright, so that's gonna be... Wow. Uh, that's going to be 23 damage, uh, body knock. That swarm is not messing around. Damage noted. That kind of stopped what I was going to do. All right, so the swarm is currently engulfed, has, has body knock engulfed, as it as it were, and it is Chetty, Chetty's turn. Uh, remember, he's not a thief, a rogue. I mean, no, as long as Chetty went before 
the swarm, everything would have been good. But now we're kind of full bark. So I'm not going to get the swarm in this one. I'm trying to think, do I want to waste a spell on this? No, not yet. I'm just going to stay there. I am going to firebolt the swarm. 18 for 10 fire. Ooh, wait, what does that do? What did you do? Fire I bolt? firebolted the swarm. Okay, hang on. Firebolt is going to be fire damage. A 18 will definitely hit that swarm. No vulnerabilities, unfortunately, but the damage has been noted. Why did not if you fall? I got you. I guess I trust you. I would have had you uh, now, but... Uh... If I would have did what I was going to do, you probably would have died. He ain't not good. Okay. Are you done chatting? Uh, yes, we are done chatting. Double check and make sure that none of my... Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to try to telekinetically shove a creature I can see within 30 feet of me. Okay. So. DC 15. On the swarm. On the swarm. You're trying to like shove it? Yes. I'm trying to shove it five feet this way. A strength save. Oh, this is gonna be good. And with the swarm of insects' mighty strength of three, giving them a minus four modifier, that is going to be a four. Woo -woo. So now the swarm is right here. Where does it get shoved? Five feet? Five feet, yeah. Okay. And, uh, see, if I would have thought about that ahead of time, I could have moved to there, and then that could have put the swarm on top of the centipede, but I didn't know really what to think about that at the time. I'm good. Okay. If you are done, then it will be the centipede's turn. And as there's one has already been a, swung at, at least, by Body Knock, that centipede is going to try to bite Body Knock. Does a 10 hit you? It does not. Armor class 16. Awesome. Now, I think 
actually for the other monster. So we've got what's called monster intention and monster reaction tables in the Subtle Adventures toolbox. So I think we should click on the monster reaction. Oop. And see how the monsters, how this centipede reacts as it's not currently in a thing. Creature uses its main attack. Alright. I guess the closest target would be Body Knock. So that centipede is going to try to attack Body Knock as well. I knew the wrists when I ran in ahead, so that's fine. These are insects, so they're not smart enough to consider flanking maneuvers. Ooh, a 24, uh, 23 to hit that time. That hits. Hmm. One, so you're gonna take three piercing damage, and you must, uh, make a constitution saving throw. Yes, must make it. I said must. That looks pretty musty to me. Let's see, you got an 11 on your con save. Difficulty to beat. 11. You are fine. Yay! Perfect. So, 4 points piercing? Uh, no, 3, three points of piercing. 3, sorry, thank you. And that's both the centipedes, so that will go to body knock. If we were in a different game, I'd do a sweeping blow, but that didn't exist in this game. Um, the swarm did the most damage to him, so he will be attacking the swarm. Does a 13 hit? A 13 does hit. Alright, 5 slashing. Okay, so as you as you slice you're using a sword, a scimitar. Mm -hmm. As as you slice through this swarm of insects, um, like you you notice like if this was like a more like solid, like like a singular creature you would have definitely done some more damage with it but as it is you might have like like flung one or two out of the out of the thing your damage didn't do as much damage as you thought it did ah I understand all right and I believe that's my turn Right, back to the insect swarm. Again, insects not very intelligent. They're gonna go for well, you know what? How about I I will refresh the monster reaction and see how they react now that you know they've been their numbers have been cut in half thanks to that firebolt. Okay. Um I'm not entirely sure how it does this. Maybe, maybe the buzzing intensifies. It could be that. Uh, but let's see. Uh, monster roars for help slash reinforcements in its own tongue. So I'm going to make a D100 roll. I'll do a D100 roll. 16. We'll just leave it at that for right now. But I guess that's going to be... <clears throat> well, that, that, that would be like more of like a bonus type thing. Calling for help. But you know what? Since this is just turn by turn, that's going to be its, its action. So let's see what the, the centipedes do. Oh, actually, uh, let's see what uh, Chatty does. 
chatty. Moves over to there. Oh, it is a cone. I thought I was just Okay, so let me readjust myself. Okay, so if I shoot a cone from here, would I be able to, like, there, there, and him be in it too? I don't know. All three? Start one, and one, one, two, and then one, two, three. I don't think you can get all three. Okay, if I move, uh, I'll move here. If I move here, can I direct my cone to where it was here and going down without getting boon, um, boondock? Body knock? Yeah, no, I'll look for your for the cone template because he has it. Um, Dick David has it on his, but you don't have it on your side. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's just say you can get him. Okay, I am going to do my dragon breath. And out of the green dragon is psychic energy being blasted out into a cone. DC 15, dexterity for half, 6 psychic damage. To all three. Okay, so dexterity save. I'll do the two centipedes first and then the swarm. One centipede made it. So he only takes three psychic. <clears throat> Failed. So, okay, so your psychic damage, like that first centipede takes like the full, br or no, the first centipede manages to save, it's the second centipede that takes the full brunt of that six psychic damage and immediately like does one of those things where it flips on its back and all of its legs fold in on itself. Woohoo! Has it got X's in its eyes? Oh yes. All 11 billion of them. Then, uh, yeah, and then the swarm is definitely going down. And is that your turn? That is, well, no, that's, um, yes, that is my turn. Okay, so with a new threat at its, at its back, I'm not even going to roll on the monster reaction table. Uh, that centipede is going to turn around and try to bite you, Chatty. Let's 
so that would be a 10 to hit. Miss. Alright, and that's gonna be its go. Top of the round, body knock, back to you. He attacks the swarm again. And misses. Damn, I'm having bad luck to Okay, so the swarm lives for now. Any movement, bonus actions, anything like that? Nope, I'm all good at this point. Alright, so then it's the swarm. The swarm, I'm not going to move it, but it's going to move back over onto you, body knock, and attack. And it is at it it's it's seriously shrunk since when you first saw it. So I can tell you that the swarm has half HP or less. So the damage will be much less this time if it does hit. And that misses. Even a fifteen would miss. Okay, yeah, they had a plus three, so no go on that, and that's going to be it for the swarm. Chatty, back to you. I'm going to firebolt the uh, swarm. 23 to hit for 10 damage. Wow. That would have been nice if I would have actually crit. Because I critted on both those dice damage. So, with your firebolt, tell me, how does, how does it look when your firebolt destroys this swarm of insects? The firebolt goes, it, because I'm not going for the ones that are right on top of body knock I'm going for like the top or the top ones but whenever I hit the top ones you know they go up and just start seeing them starting to pop 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 and with the heat you know still there it just pops you see all the different insects and everything just pop and just fall to the ground awesome okay the swarm is toast swarm toast mm. It brings us back to the centipede. The centipede is going to try to bite you again, uh, Chetty. Uh, 17 to hit. That hits. Not ignore Ooh. that. That wasn't supposed to be a d6. Okay, so that's going to be four piercing damage, and you need to make a constitution save. Come on, make it before you fake it. No, you faked it before you can make it. Oh, okay. So, on a failed constitution save, uh, you will take some more poison damage. You'll take eight poison damage. Am I, am I considered poisoned? Let's see. If the poison damage reduces the target to zero hit points, the target is stable but poisoned for one hour, even after regaining hit points, and is paralyzed while poisoned this way. So. You did not get reduced to zero, so I do not think you are poisoned. All right. But it, it got some licks in. Yeah, it did. All right, body knock. It's your turn. All right, I'm going to move down and attack with my scimitar against the last known assailant.
Okay, I don't have the rights to bring him to the front, yeah. Does a 12, well, 13 hit? I got flanking. A 13 just hits, and tell me, how does it look when you kill this centipede? I just uh, try and slice all its legs off with my fancy sword work, and then I accidentally chop the head off while I'm doing it, so he is down. Accidentally chop the head off he's going for the feet. Yeah, 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 that's it. Um, I gotta go do something real quick, guys. Sorry, I'll be back in a few. That's all right. This is probably a good time to go to break. We will wrap up uh, the the uh, you know the final details of this encounter when we return. All right. Thank you. Be back.
All right, we are back. <clears throat> Thanks for sticking around. How's everyone doing tonight? Cool, cool. All right. Nick Knock, Body Walk, give a centipede a bone. Yep. <laughs> So, combat has concluded. Uh, real quick, before we get back in, I know that this is sort of uh, billed as DM-less D&D, but we're more kind of just exploring how the system works and whatnot, so that we can kind of get ideas from each other. And I like, you know, a lot of this stuff. It's just... It can get time consuming just going through and rolling the different things. So if us you know if you're playing by yourself, it's probably not to be a big deal. Yeah, I mean it took me the first thing that I went through, it took me hours and hours to get through it and all it was was going down into the sewers and looking for these rats. So uh, but you know, if you're if you don't have anybody else to play with and you're using this to play on your own it's completely acceptable in my opinion. There's other stuff to go with it too. You've got the mythic uh, system that works very well. And if you just look up solo role playing, uh, you'll find a lot of stuff on the internet for sure. All right. <clears throat> well, with that, uh, considering the combatants involved, there's no loot, sadly. But it does uh, bring about some questions, if you think about it. Well, one question. Did we actually get an entire box of salt out of this? Huh? See what I did there? Uh, I saw him come in, yep. <laughs> Hi, Salt. Thanks for joining us. Uh, no, uh, there, there sadly was not an entire box of salt. <laughs> Did we look in all the centipedes' pockets? <laughs> the centipedes don't have pockets. I guess we did, then. Or we didn't. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah, and all that's left of the swarm of insects is just... like popcorn. Thanks to that firebolt. But, no, the question that that comes about is, so... You're in the middle of a city. Why... Why was a pair of centipedes working with a swarm of insects? Why were they, like... Together, in tandem? Ooh, a mystery. So I think if we go back to... The Solo Adventures toolbox, this might be a place with some uh, yes or no questions. So we have any ideas for yes or, yes or no questions. Were they summoned creatures? There you go. Okay. So I think... <clears throat> I mean, it's likely or unlikely. Why don't we do a d20 roll? No, they were not. Hmm. Okay, if they weren't summoned, then somebody had to have brought them. Or, hmm, did somebody bring them? Did somebody, did somebody bring them? I'll, I'll do it. Or Steve, you got it? Yeah, you can go, you can go ahead. I just reflexively clicked. <laughs> No, that's fine. So, okay, so somebody brought these insects here. Why did somebody bring insects here? So I think that means we have to roll on the situations table to 
come up with some ideas. <laughs> now again, this would be like if you were playing by yourself, you're, you're kind of fanging being the DM, but you know, it's a, you have to kind of put the story together still and then play it as if you don't know. Well, could it possibly um, have been a distraction for a robbery? Could we do that for a yes or no question? Sure. Your question, you roll. Okay, I do believe a 12 would be a yes. Let me just double check. Okay, <clears throat> so a 12 is a maybe. Now we can do the, the, well, the words. May give us a I better idea of what to do. Okay, yes, that is a great idea. So I'll go back to the situations tab. <clears throat> Scavenge. <clears throat> Dress. Enlarge. Bid. Is that enlarge? Enlarge, yes. And dress, D R E S S, right? Yes. I thought it was duress. Dress, okay. Cabbage dress. Uh, shoot, what was the third one? Savage dress something bid. Execute? S no, scavenge? Scavenge. Bid. Bid was the last one. Scavenge, dress. Alright, you know what? We'll just roll a new one. Resist. Yeah, I found I had to write them down to remember. <laughs> Alright, so we have scavenge. Scavenge? Scavenge? I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Uh, dress, bid, and resist. Well, uh, bid could be like, like, like an auction house, and okay. So there's some kind of dress out there that somebody was bidding on. They were resisting their bids, or they they were finding resistance because somebody else kept outbidding them. Yeah, so the, so now they're wanting to scavenge the uh, dress, so basically steal the dress because they were being outbid. Well, the insects might be scavengers. So, maybe they um, summoned her, not summoned, but herded these insects in to distract them during the bidding. So, th with that, like, I mean, th this is hardly a distraction. I mean, it is a distraction, but this is a small distraction. So, that would make me think there's more. Like, these, like, the ones that you just fought were ones that got away from the rest of the group. Yeah, sounds like we need mm -hmm. to find an auction house nearby. 
Okay. So, yes. Uh, let me think. I'm pretty sure that... Oh! No, I know. They've got something in here for the settlements. Or was that in the second book? Well, they could be having this auction at the fishbowl. It is a hoity-toity place. Oh, there was... I saw something. Hmm. Well, I think our narrative determined that there is an auction house in this in this city, so we're just gonna go with that. Uh, tracking down said auction house probably sh shouldn't be too difficult of a thing. I mean, there's other people that you can ask or directions and stuff, so I think finding it would be relatively easy, but. We are going to be walking through a city, so... Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, <clears throat> I think it's time to roll on to see how uh, if we have any city encounters or events. I don't know if you needed that. Hmm. Hang on, I'm almost to the thing. <clears throat> so, That's what she said. <laughs> Alright. Uh, <clears throat> this type of settlement is a city. And during the day, which... Let's see, if this was a yes or no question, is it daytime? Your 16 says it's a yes, so it's daytime. That means during a 12 hour period, we would make eight uh, D100 rolls to check for encounters. But it's not going to take 12 hours to get from uh, the sword and whatever. The sword and assassin, which is where you are. <clears throat> it's not going to take 12 hours to get from there to the auction house. So let's do two D100 rolls, and those are both over 25, so nothing noteworthy happens on the way to the auction house. So now... I guess... Go oh. ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, the first question would be... Um, is it invitation only? <laughs> the auction. Ah, uh, now that I'd say there, it's more likely that it is than it isn't. So, when you make your D twenty roll, add two to the result. It is most definitely invite only. <clears throat> well, look, see, I don't think there's going to be an issue, because if there's going to be some distractions happening, we can kill the distractions, or go in to kill the distractions if the distractions are already in, so the invite thing I don't think is going to be as important at the second, unless the, um, unless it hasn't happened yet, then it would be an issue. Okay. Well, I think in order to move on, we'll probably have to roll up some more situations.
look. Seduce. Travel. And and danger. In danger. And danger. E N D A N G E R. Okay, so we're gonna have to seduce our way. And again, we don't need to use all the words, we just need to use the ones that make sense. In fact, we can roll more if we want. Why don't, why don't we just, why don't we do two more? We have Q, uh, Q-U-E-U-E, -Q, -U -E, Q. And Beautify. Well, the dress could be beautiful. Um, hmm. And there's probably a queue to get in since it's invite only. There's a line. And I mean, look. Ah, maybe there's somebody standing in the queue to get in line. Yeah, it looks out of place. Yep. Some kind of in danger. Or, I mean, look like for another another way in, maybe? Or maybe something yeah, else we'll have is to happening? Try around the back and seduce our way in and oh. <laughs> and maybe. Beautify, like... Hmm. We have to get all fancy. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, I mean, uh, Body Knock is already in fine clothing. So... Travel could mean, like, you could try... You could try to get in through the front and claiming that, you know, your travelers from, you know, far off land, maybe you lost your invitation, or you want to try to, go. try to, like, you know, deceive your way in, or... Or seduce our way in. Um, yes, or seduce your way in. <laughs> so okay. maybe we should roll an NPC for the person at the door. Yes. All right. So that's another one of the cool things with the Solo Adventures Toolbox. They give you they give you tools for everything, including creating NPCs. And the NPC that hmm. So uh, who is this person again for this? The Dorman? Okay. Or door lady. Indeed. Yep. Door person. It is a door lady. It's a human female. She looks... So it says, uh... Human female. She's chaotic good. Disposition is lonely. Economic status just getting by, good or evil. Ah, lonely. Fits in to seduce. Profession is innkeeper. But of course, like, you know, we we will uh, the characters wouldn't know these things. So how would we portray this in game? Like if she's lonely, maybe she just kinda looks like maybe kinda sad when she's working. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And Look. The, just getting by you know, economically means like, you know, she's probably decently dressed, maybe not anything too fancy, but, but dressed for her job. 
And Maybe the clothes are worn. Yeah. Just and, getting by. And if her well, it says profession innkeeper, but you know, obviously in this, it she she's the door person. Yeah, the stuff that doesn't fit, you can just leave it out. So, can I press to digitate a uh, a bouquet of flowers? Or a single flower? Yeah, I don't think... I don't know if you could do, like, a full bouquet, but I'm pretty sure you could do a flower. It's more of a druid craft thing, but it, that's all the same vein of magical fuckery. So I will press the digitate a lily. A lily? And a lily. Salt, are you still in here? He doesn't know galaxy. Anyways. Uh, you press to digitate a lily. Okay. Alright. So, now, she's gonna need a name. And fortunately, when we were having the name debacle at the beginning, chatty, lol, uh, I did bring up the fantasy name generator, so let's go ahead and find us a human female name in fantasy. Come on, let it be Lily. Let it be Lily. Okay, how about... A yes or no? Yeah, let's do a yes or no, but... I think it's going to be less like, I mean, it, it's a really highly specialized situation, so I don't think we could do just a straight yes-no. I think there's got to be a penalty on it. So... So, 15 or higher? I'm finding a little table. Or rather, waiting for the page to load. Okay, so we'll say that it's not impossible, but highly unlikely. So minus four. Nope, her name is definitely not Lily. Okay. Roll 20, don't want to make this perfect. <laughs> Trying to find... Oh, let's go with... Because uh... they don't have just like human... Well, they do. You have to go to a different chart. I'll look at the half L. Let's call her Maisie. So Maisie's there. And then, okay. So there's a queue, there's a line. We're in line to get into the auction house and uh, the woman at the front is, you know, she lets some people in, turns others away because it's invite only so with that uh, I, I guess we eventually get to the front of the queue and so what's what is the plan what would you like to do gonna go up there and persuade her ha <laughs> I go up to her and I go I saw this, and I was like, oh, there has to be a beautiful lady who will enjoy it. Then I turned around, and I saw you, and I knew you were the one this lady was searching for. Okay. 
Okay. And so, sadly, the, the, the sad thing with the NPC generator is that it doesn't create stats. But it'd be like a human commoner, basically. So, what? I guess that would be like insight? That's good. Cool. We'll say she's got like a plus one. Hey, 12. So, all right, lonely. Um, her, her, her eyes kind of actually light up for a second. A smile creeps across her face. Um, it's like, oh, how sweet. You have a, uh, your invitation. Yeah, it's right here, and I, um, wave my hand in the air and the smoke comes out of my hands and an invitation it might not be that this invitation appears in my hand for prestidigitate okay so I think this is going to be a yes no let's ask the question first Is what you are doing going to be enough to charm her and, you know, be like silly enough to like actually work kind of thing? I wouldn't say that it's impossible. I'd say, I wouldn't say it's highly unlikely. Let's just go with unlikely. So let's do a minus two on that. Unlikely, but she's lonely and I gave her a flower. Okay. I'll give you that. Let's go. We'll just do a straight roll. Uh, don't matter anyway. I would have had it anyway. <laughs> right. All right. You're 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 kind of cute. Uh, you can go ahead. It's not the right invitation, but uh, I won't say anything if you won't. That's not. Oh, uh, well. Magic's not always <laughs> the way it seems. But thank you, Ellie. I mean, keep going. Uh, do I follow him in? I do follow him in, but does it work? I mean, <laughs> Let's do a yes or no. But you are my plus one. Okay, so yes or no. Ooh. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. Very borderline, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think with your, your my plus one comment, uh, she, she actually kind of smirks and lets you, lets you go in as also. Okay, so let's see. What does it look like inside? Uh, inside the auction house. So, <clears throat> one thing, well, well we can immediately assume that all the windows are stained glass. Yep, pitch bubble. Everybody works glass in this town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah while well, he's figuring that out, in our Friday game, we're here in the same city, and I needed to come up with something to put inside this guy's pocket to, uh, because I'm stealing a gem from him and I was like I should go buy a cheap gym but then all of a sudden you know with help of my companion and everything's like wait a second this is the city of glass it don't have to be a gym it could be a you know piece of uh, glass so that's what I got I got a piece of glass and switched it out on him <clears throat> And also, I realized too that we just kind of went right to the auction house. We, without, with our characters not really having any 
idea why to go there. And so... Yeah, we were searching for the source of these insects, see? Yeah. We didn't do any rolls, that's okay. You, you follow, you're able to follow the centipedes tracks back. Or something. <clears throat> okay. Alright, inside the auction house, so there's gonna be lots of people. You know, at least a decent amount of people. They're doing the bidding thing. I think... I think we kind of might have to sort of do this like a dungeon generator just for like rooms and whatnot. Maybe. It's always tougher uh, in the urban setting, I guess. Oh well, either way. So there must be like, you know, with the, we, if we track the insects back here, whoever is controlling them <clears throat> uh, has to have a way to set up this distraction. So how would, well, let's figure out what our assailant is trying to do exactly now that we are actually here in the uh, auction house. Yeah, can I do a perception roll to see if I see anybody that looks suspicious? Oh, before we do that, let's let's figure out it like what his deal is. Gotcha. So I think we're gonna have to go back to the situations table. This might give us ideas for uh, his motive. Well, we have that ideas for how he's how he's going to set things up. Provide. Stab. Sob and bait. Oh, those are good ones, I think, for this. Providing a sob story is bait. Ah. Or or even just sobbing is bait. Stab the auctioneer. But how do the insects come into play? Maybe the insects were the original plan, but they got away. Maybe maybe that really was all there was to the those insects. Maybe they weren't part of a bigger menagerie of bugs. His distraction, his or her, because we haven't decided figured out if this is male or female, the, the assailant's distraction got Scuttled, basically. He lost his bugs, or she. He he came and opened the box, and they flew right out the window. They went right out the window. Yes. Yeah, so that meant that he needed to provide mm -hmm, a new method of getting that dress and uh, ideas. Sob, cry as bait, so you can get close to the auctioneer and stab him, maybe. All right. I mean, what do you guys think? That that seems maybe um, he got close to the auctioneer and told him a a story about a whoa a sob story. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that yours is probably better. Sorry. Oh no, that's fine. Okay. Well, with that, that, then, I think you can make that perception check to see if this is going down. Or to see if you notice this going down. 
Yeah, neither. <laughs> Ooh. Pretty colors. Okay, so with that, I would say that uh, the assailant successfully baited the auctioneer away. So, like, they're doing, they they put a little sign up, be back in 10. I don't know. And he gets the auctioneer away. And does stab him. So at that point, we hear a scream as the person is getting stabbed to death. <coughs> yes, presumably behind the scenes. So that gives us the next part of our adventure. What happens now? Um, what, um, what does happen? Can I happen tell where now? the scream come from? So yes, it comes from in back. Like, there's a stage, and, you know, with the curtain, uh, but it's all, like, back behind curtain, you know, probably one of, like, the dressing rooms or something, you would imagine. Well, oh, um, Body Knock would have a tendency to want to run in that direction. Okay. So, I think that we'd be able to do that. Um, let's see. It is highly likely... Well, I wouldn't say <clears throat> highly likely. It's likely that if this was like a stabbing grab, which I'm thinking, <clears throat> that he's just stabbing the auctioneer and then taking the shit, getting running, uh, there, there's a higher possibility that, like, uh, he's going to have more of a lead on a, on a chase. So why don't we do a yes, no, is the question will be, Is the assailant how did, did the assailant get a head start in this Your chase? Your turn, Lewis. And it was, no, they did not get a head start. That's gonna actually be a maybe with the plus two, but no, it's on the low end. So we'll say they didn't really get a head start like so much as. Um, but Maybe it, it means he got a chance to grab the dress before we get there. Yes, I think he grabbed the dress, but maybe the exit he was going to take in the back is like blocked off, so he can't actually go out that way. So he's having to turn back around and go. Um, okay. Yeah, us. sounds good. Okay, so then I think at that point it would turn into an encounter uh, with initiatives. Let me clear this thing off first. Okay, and then... Um, yeah, we still haven't generated the assailant, have we? Right, not exactly. So, with this... Uh, well, first we'll figure out like how many, how many squares away he is. Um, See the bad part about this is I have a perfect thing to stop this, and I rolled a 1, so I have a 4. Somebody want to roll a d8, please. Both of us did. The first d8 is 1. So he ran yeah. right into us? Let me double check the encounters thing. Because I think it's supposed to be a multiplier. I'm definitely getting a better idea of how all this works through this, and I think it has definite potential. Oh yeah, for sure, and since you got that thing you did, that makes things a bit easier. Yeah, it's not very well organized, I just kind of organized it semi-randomly, because I wasn't, you know, I was just doing those tables, not working on it. Yeah, 
have to get to the monster list. Oh, there we go. They do have class tables and stuff in here for NPCs. Okay, here it is. Distance of monster from PC or PCs. Roll 1d8. This is that many squares away. Or roll 1d10. 1d10 times 10. Oh, <coughs> well, alright. I guess he is one square away. We came through the curtain and there he was. Alright, and this is gonna be uh, th this is the boss, so let's uh, roll it as a boss monster. And hopefully he don't actually have that many hit points. I just threw down one of the <laughs> tokens. Okay, so it's uh, gonna be a hard encounter. Let's look at our chart to figure out. The bad part about all this is we already are like hurt. Yeah, I, I thought about whether we should wait, but it seemed urgent that we run to the screen. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, we can ask him to, you know, hey, can you steal this tomorrow? NPC level 5 hard is the conversion. Okay, so it's going to be 1 CR2. Let's see. Really? Yeah. Versus two. I don't know. I just kept rolling on it until I got one. Uh, a single combatant. Alright. It gave me a cult fanatic. Actually, first it gave me a mimic, but that doesn't really fit. The dress was the culprit the whole time. much started on book two it may be that I need to go ahead and get into that there's more stuff in here good stuff
Well, that's unfortunate for for them. They got a three on their initiative. Oh! Alrighty. Okay, so you're using them. Cool. I'll take that guy out. Yeah, and this one has an actual working character sheet that I can use too. Yay! Yay. Alright, he's one square away. So you give him the benefit of that that little five foot buffer. And body knock, it is going to be up to you. So you see this guy, he's like holding a bloody dagger and uh, a really pretty dress for some reason. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to swoop around to the side of him and attack with my scimitar. He has 22 hits, 8 slashing. Uh, okay. One sec. I'm just looking at something here. No worries. Okay, so yes, a 22 will most assuredly hit. Dealing 8 slashing damage, okay. damage has been noted. Thank you. Is that it for you? Um, yes, at this point. Chatty. This is almost not fair. Okay. Um, instead of doing what I was going to do, I'm going to go ahead and fire bolt. 16 to hit for two fire damage. Uh, 16 does hit for two. Okay, and then I'm going to quicken a fire bolt and do it again. Ooh. Pew pew. 12. A 12 does miss, sadly. Dang it. Okay, well, if I would have rolled better, that would have been really cool. Um, so, that was my action and my bonus action. That's all I'm doing. Okay. It is the cult fanatic's turn, as it, that is the token. And, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, okay, okay.
Alright, so action to disengage. You didn't by any chance take Sentinel as a fourth level feat, did you? Nah, sorry. I wanted the stat increases. So that was disallowing me the attack of opportunity, right? Yeah. Let's see, I was right there, right? Yes. Correct. Okay, so disengage and then move. And then, as a bonus action, we'll cast Spiritual Weapon. He didn't use his bonus action with uh, the disengage? No, that was his action to disengage. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, sorry. Yeah, the disengage, the um, rogues get it free because that's his action. That's the spiritual weapon there next to Body Knock. It gets a 6 on its uh, attack roll and will miss. Definitely. But that is the uh, Fanatic's turn, bringing it back around to Body Knock. Alright, and 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah I can reach him, but... Does a spiritual weapon get an attack of opportunity? It does not. Alright, so I'm running down to him. And attack with the scimitar. And miss. Alrighty. And then that's gonna go then is that your turn? Yes, that's all I can do. Chatty. Firebolts 15 for 8 fire. Okay, 15 hits. And do eight fire damage. Bonus action, quick and spell, firebolt. Ooh, twelve? Twelve misses. Come on! I don't want to be wasting my sorcery points for this crap. Uh, and then I moved to there. And I am done. Alright, bonus action. He's going to move the spiritual weapon to attack Chatty. Twenty-two for six force damage. Ouch! And then, all right, I'm gonna 
gonna try to cast another spell. This time he's gonna cast Old Person on Body Knife. Definitely high enough. All right. So you feel this wave of like magic, like center, like coming over you, but like you're able to like shake it off. All right, Tay Tay, shake it off, shake it off. You successfully shake it off. And... Hmm. He's gonna keep... He's gonna try to keep running. Oh, oh. Swaying that beautiful bean footage at him. Ah. And you are a fighter, so remember you do have action search. Yep, I was going to do that here in just a second. Okay. Well, you take your swing, you miss, so the cultist is going to get to run. We'll all run with him. I was trying to get us all back in squares. Yep. So the cultist like, runs. And it is your turn, Body Knock. How does 13 do? 13 will hit. Eight slashing. He's looking pretty rough. Action surge. And attack again. Oh, whoa, nice. whoa, 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 whoa. 14 though. Body knock. How do you want to do this? I am carefully avoiding the dress. <laughs> And uh, trying to stab him in the opposite side of his waist. And right. Running through. How does that feel? <laughs> Do you kill him or knock him out? Um, definitely knock him out because uh, we want to question.
Okay, so with the flat of your scimitar, you basically, what, smack him upside the head? Kidney shot. Kidney shot. Boom. All right, well, yeah, I think you got him. And I will definitely search the body while he's still unconscious. Okay, yeah. So let's see. I think I mean, he's got to have some loot. Oh, nice dress. <laughs> What you do is you get the dress and go up to the girl at the door. Hey, Peter, this is for you. We're already in. I guess you want to seduce your way back out. All right, so he's got seven platinum pieces. Nice. And now what what are you doing? I'm looking around for to see if anybody else has come back to investigate <laughs> this brouhaha. Okay, and then what are you doing, Chatty? Uh Do you remember why you ran back here? Scream! Oh yes, I'm going to the uh, person who got stabbed. All right, I think it's a yes/no if he's still alive. You got it, Nifty. I mean, Chatty. <laughs> Is he still alive? No. Oh, that's too bad. So unfortunately, you get back to the body just a moment or two too late or either that or the it was an instant kill might you're not quite sure but the murder has happened and you guys have managed to knock out the murderer Ooh. maybe we'll get a reward for sure you're, gonna, you're bound to get some sort of commendation I think mm -hmm. and oh so did you did you do the downtime tables on here at all? No, it doesn't look like it. Any of those? But yeah, okay. So I think, like you know that that is a success. Like you got you managed to subdue the criminal, and you know other people do come back. You do see other people coming back to, uh, you know, see what the heck is going on, and before too long uh, some of the town guard arrive Ooh, I wonder what the town guard looked like in this city so like stain the stained glass capital of the world are they very tackily dressed I mean they'll they'll be dressed for like you know for for use not for show but I mean they'd still have like I'm thinking you know, they wouldn't be like the boys in blue, they'd probably be wear maybe like maroon or something like that for like Or stained glass. Their outfits, you know, are patch work built like by stained glass. That might make sense. I think it does. Yeah, that might look a little tough. I rolled a thirteen, so you know <clears throat> it's up to you if uh by getting you pluses or minuses on that question. Well, what was the actual question? Uh, I believe, are they tackily dressed? Yeah, that's what it said. 
ta uh, tactfully dressed? No. Tacky. 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 Tackily dressed. Tacky. Oh, okay. Um, no. We're gonna go with that being like a low maybe. Because it's unlikely that, you know, they're... Oh, well, no. Maybe it's not. You know what? Yeah. Why not? It, it is tacky. It looks like... Like stained glass uniforms. They're like capes. They're like, they have like cloaks, rather. Like their cloaks are like patterned like stained glass, but it, it doesn't look good. Yeah. It was a nice thought whenever the person came up with it, but it didn't really turn out the way they thought. They're always like, God, why are they always making us wear these stupid cloaks? Or something. A cloak only a mother could love. But yeah, anyways, the, the city guard comes. I said town guard before. I should have said city. This is a city. The city guard shows up and, you know, they they take statements from you. They they take the, the assailant into custody. Uh... The dress... what happens to the dress? Well, it was property of whoever was auctioning it. Well, yeah, but was it damaged in the fight? Yeah, that's what he was asking. I got you. Yeah. Was, the, was the dress damaged in the fight? No, it was not. I will note at this point, I didn't say it before, but body knock is lawful good. Oh, okay. So he would insist if we return the dress, even if somebody was thinking about keeping it. So yeah, I mean, you hand the dress over, like this guy is trying to steal it, blah blah blah. Um, they, you know what they, they give you for your reward is a complimentary meal at the fishbowl. A complimentary dinner. And the oh, I am feeling a bit peckish. Yeah, and the fish bowls, you know, it it's like highest society right there. It's usually like like a waiting list to get in. Get a reservation. But yeah, I think I think we can count this as as a successful uh, adventure. Yeah, yeah, it, it, we had to use our imagination, but that's part of it. That's part of every role-playing game. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're sitting at a bar, we hear a commotion outside, we go fight these bugs, we track the bugs back to the, this op, uh, auction house. I don't know why I want to keep saying opera house. We track them back to this auction house, discover that they were supposed to be used as a distraction in a robbery, but since they escaped, the guy just went and stabbed the auctioneer, killing him, but you guys managed to stop him before he could get away. And a job well done. So yeah, I think that is the perfect place to end this. Well, this was fun. I'm going to work some more on the tables and stuff in between now and whenever and see how good I can get them. Yeah, NPCs, they had the glasses and stuff there, too. Yep, I, I didn't fully finish going through it, so I'll go back through and see if there's tables I haven't put in yet. All right, well, um, yeah, as usual, thank you once again for joining us the DOTV podcast crew um I don't know do we have any any uh thing we want to plug any shout outs or anything before we head out well, I just want to say uh come on out to our game tomorrow night um 9pm eastern when we should be back to our uh defenders of the veil vale campaign See what, what, uh, if the defenders can 
get out of uh, the slave pit and get out alive. Yes. Hopefully we can do that and get out and start doing some real exploring or something. And I want to thank both of you for coming and playing. Uh, thank yes, thank you. Thank both of you for, for being here. Thank everyone in the in the audience. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, until next time, until tomorrow, we love you. <laughs>